Center. Here to help us discuss what leaders in our country should do, we bring in former special assistant to President Trump and American First Action Communications Director Kelly Sadler and Democratic strategist and media strategist for the 20, uh, 2012 Obama campaign, Roger Fisk. Thank you both for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Guys, I want to I want to ask a favor right now. Let's take off all of our political hats. Pretend that the president for a second is like agnostic, meaning no party. If you got asked and both of you guys have served at high levels, if you were asked by the president of the United States or the White House today, what do we need to do to help quell this situation? What advice would you give the White House if asked? Kelly, let me start with you. Um, I think it's important uh, for the president to get out there and show solidarity uh, with a lot of these minority-owned businesses that have been looted, that have been rioted, that have been closed for two months because of COVID-19 and were just on the cusp of reopening and now have been devastated by these Antifa antagonists. Um, so I would get them out. Um, I'd get him to go to some of these sites to talk with these business leaders and provide, you know, his, his message of economic recovery um, for all, uh, especially those within the minority community, because those were, the, those were, unfortunately, the businesses that were most affected by these riots across the nation. Yeah, Ro Roger, here's my angle, and I, I, I'm going to guess where you're going to come down, but I but I, I think one of the things that's getting lost, and I, I appreciate what Kelly's saying, because you, you walked down the streets of D.C. today, and all these businesses that were probably excited to start opening on Friday are now boarded up, smashed windows, graffiti all over them. But I think that we're, we're losing the message that started all of this. And I think that we've got to figure out how to get this back, because it seems that everybody who knew George Floyd doesn't think that this is what he would want. And we're losing track of, of where this all began. So what advice would you share? I, first off, um, Sean and Lindsay, thanks so much for having me. And it's wonderful to be here with Kelly. I don't really differ much with, with Kelly's um, comments on this. I think the you know, good good policy uh, makes good politics. And I think the president, similar to kind of how he could have navigated the virus, could just try to look the American people directly in the eye and speak plainly about uh, the pain that people are feeling and giving it some voice, letting people know that they have a president that hears them and sees them. I, I hear her point about the business owners, but you know these situations, the death of Mr. Floyd, basically serve as kind of a as kindling for circumstances that were in in place for years and sometimes decades. For example, when you go back in the history of Minnesota, a couple generations ago, there was a program about helping people buy their farms, and guess who was excluded from that program? Black folks were excluded from that program. Guess why you end up with a lot of white ownership of farms? So this is not necessarily just an Antifa thing. I think she could have actually pushed the needle over to include the full spectrum of humanity involved here. But if the president were to just calmly speak to the American people, and I'll also agree with her other point, a point about going out and, and spending some time with the impacted communities, that that would go a long way. Because if people feel like they're heard, then they don't feel like they have to scream as much. So you, there's a way to take the whole temperature down on something like this, and it requires leadership. You know, Roger, I, I wonder sometimes if that would work, because when you look at these mayors out there, mayor after mayor and black leader after black leader, asking these people to, to stop the riots, to continue peaceful protest, but it's not quelling these people's frustration and their concern. We just see it increasing every night. And so, Kelly, what is it going to take for these folks to be heard? Because everyone's agreeing that what happened to George Floyd is wrong and that justice needs to be served and that there is a deep-rooted issue that needs to be worked on. But what's it going to take for people to actually believe that? Well, you know, I don't know. And this is something that has plagued our nation for, you know, since its beginning, really. So there's no one easy answer. There's no one cure-all. Uh, however, I, I, feel, I feel very sad today that just one week ago, last Monday, this country was unified, Republicans and Democrats alike, at the outrage of George Floyd's death. I think that any American, all Americans that saw that eight-minute footage knew that that police officer was guilty and he killed uh, an innocent man. So we had a moment of togetherness. And you saw throughout these peaceful protests, a lot of cops and sheriffs 
joining with the protesters um, in 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 just kind of the ab like of condoning uh, what this one bad cop did, and then you know you had this whole movement of togetherness hijacked by these lo looters and rioters, um, which are dis which have divided our country, and the blame goes on them. So I believe the president is doing the right thing in calling Antifa out as a domestic violence as a domestic terrorist organization. I believe that the DOJ is doing the right thing in, in bringing together a task force that will figure out who is this being funded by, how is their organizations. In Santa Monica last night, we know that the police said that 95 percent of those arrested were not even city residents. So where are these people coming from? How are they organized? we got to get to the bottom of this. At the same time, I feel a dismay with the mainstream media. Uh, the president did go out and issue remarks on Saturday. Um, and they were widely uh, just, they weren't even covered. Um, so he has issued remarks on George Floyd several times um, about how this was just a grave tragedy. That should Roger, Roger, we're out of time, but yes or no, should the president give an address from the Oval Office? He should, and he should set aside his tweets, which are basically pouring gasoline on this whole thing. Okay. All right. Well, thank you guys. This is a lot to break down, and I look forward to having you back.